Hey everyone, I'm John Michael Opling along with Tyree Smith for, our, for week four of high school football in the UP, but it's our third edition of Friday Night Frenzy for the semester. That's just weird mathematics, one of the mysteries that science still can't answer. But you know what we can answer? Featured game tonight. Yeah, who won our featured game of the week? Westwood versus Ishpeming. Legends have spoken of this legendary rivalry whose games have been the stuff of legends. It's a tale as old as time, a song as old as rhyme. Pats versus the Hem. Go ahead, sing it for them. Let's get it. <laughs> the Hematites, oh, they were getting ready for by far their biggest game of their young season, competing for bragging rights in Ishpeming Township against Taylor Delangelo and the Westwood Patriots. He was getting ready for a big night, and boy, oh boy, He'd have one a career when the Patriots had an audience to witness it. Even their mascot showed up. Patriots on their very first drive. Delangelo rolling right looking for Chad Pullman. Incomplete. But why is that the highlight? Wait a second. There's some laundry on the field. It's yellow. Pass interference by the defense. In the end zone, ball would get placed at the one-yard line. Very next play. Tell me if you heard this. Delangelo rolling right looking for Chad, for, for Chad Pullman. Who gives a little Ricky Bobby shake and bake to the Ishpeming -hoo! defender into the end zone for the first half dozen of this one. Westwood strikes first. Mr. Pulled Pork Pullman scores on that one. Ishpeming got the ball next. John Corkin looking to retaliate. Swallowed up, but hold up. He pulls a Houdini sneaking out of that teeny-weeny little space for a big gain. Also pushing a lot of buttons on that Madden controller for... Huh. A big gain into Westwood territory. Ooh. Into the second quarter, still 8-0 Westwood. Otto Swanson, ooh, oh, swallowed up by a flurry of Patriots. Now we know how the Brits felt during the Battle of Trenton back in 1775. Little history lesson. I like it. Yeah, now back to Taylor Delangelo. Rolling to his left, decides to keep it in tuck, and boy, oh boy, look at him go. Shaking the boots right off of Tanner Romback for another big gain on the quarterback keeper. Two plays later, it's the keeper once again, and Mr. Delangelo says... Hello to the end zone. This time he don't need no messenger. He gets in himself. 14-0 Westwood after that. And the fans, just look at this fan. They were going crazy. They were hyped. This young fan, yeah, he was really feeling it. <laughs> I Westwood like it. Westwood would have one more chance to score with under five seconds left in the half. 3.9 Delangelo. He would go with the play action to Pullman. Cox back, fires to the end zone. Look for Zachary Carlson. Oh, just out of his reach, but still a phenomenal half for the Patriots. And the great game it ended up being, they go on to crush this for being 38 to nothing. How many people you think could have predicted that one, man? Absolutely no. I don't know. It's crazy. It's the first time that Westwood has actually won a game at Ishpeming since 1998. Really? Yeah, but non-forfeit. They've won via non-forfeit. Interesting. And it's, it's weird because I also heard an Ishpeming coach say during the game, after Westwood scored on their first drive, that they were too scared to run it on Ishpeming. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Delangelo was happy about that because <laughs> – Three passing touchdowns, one rushing, and he had two interceptions on defense playing safety. So, hey. great, great game for him. Exactly. Now, taking a look at some other scores from around Upper Peninsula. Nagani traveled to Manistee to take on the Emeralds, and it looked like it was a close game because the Miners walk away with a narrow win. 24-22 to is the final mm, score. That is close. Exactly. Mountaineers hosted their neighboring school, the Norway Knights, and it looks like they're keeping their big season rolling. Iron Mountain wins. At home, 39 Iron to looks zero. Really good this year. That's what really I good. You want to take the next highlight? Oh, yeah, definitely. Pass All it right. to your man. I like it. I like it. Hover and Gwen, the model towner, still looking for their first win of the season against the Hancock Bulldogs. It's weird because, you know, me and Michael were both expecting big things from Gwen this season, and it's interesting in preview. But don't worry, they got Caleb Anderson back. It's going to be something. He's going to roll to his left, allowing. Y'all know I love to say that a 54-yard scurry would get Hancock in front in a hurry. It was 12-7 Gwen at half. But, you know, 10 minutes in the third Hancock, they would be up by 9, 21 to 12. But don't worry, because Model Towner's next possession, they are going to answer back. But, however, just like Austin Powers in the second film, couldn't get their mojo. Caleb Anderson missing open receivers, running back. It's just, it's kind of interesting. I don't understand. They got butter on their hands. They got butter on their hands, Yeah, Michael. they got butter. Butter uh, fingers. It's you know, all right. It happens. It happens to the best of us. One first down would allow by turnovers. But <laughs> that's not what you see because they're going to roll. And, ooh, breaking tackles. Nobody's going to catch them. Then that quarterback's looking money, money right, getting into the end zone. And, but that would run and be the final score of the game. Hancock defeats Gwen 
27 to 12. Gwen still unable to get their first win. Yeah, Eskimos pumped on it pumped up to take on Marquette for homecoming. Big night early on Marquette's Austin Rill gets the ball and hits Drew Weibel on a little slant, and then it's just him and the open field. Just the way you like it. Nothing Run, but Forrest. green grass. <laughs> no one gonna get to him. A long TD. Just a little bit later, Marquette. They'd have the ball again. And you know, when it when it's the Redmond. Riddle is going to be involved at some point. Great quarterback. He's just going to roll to his right and find Justin Germu, who's going to try and make a move, but get stuffed like a Thanksgiving turkey. Swatted like he was part of that elite squad, the SWAT team. Eskimos would end up stopping them on that drive, and then Marquette does something you rarely see in a high school football game. Kicking a field goal. Ah, yeah, they say we're not a kicking peninsula, but I disagree. I digress. Escanaba starts to battle back. Joshua Brunchens. Gets the ball, finds a hole in the middle of the field, and gets into the end zone, basically untouched. And unfortunately, that's all we have. Marquette was leading 10 to 7 at halftime, but due to a power outage at the football stadium, the rest of the game is being postponed until 11 a.m. tomorrow. Looking at some more scores from earlier tonight, Calumet looked to continue their hot streak as they hosted the Wycons, and they got it going. Defensive battle, really, and 14 to nothing. They moved to 4 0 on the season, but. I don't know. That offense looking a little iffy in that one. Only 14 points, but the defense still, still looking, 4 0, though. Looking very strong. 4 0, don't lie. You're right about that one. Exactly. Wins count. Barbara Harris on the road against Gohebic Miners. And another close game tonight as the Broncos managed to get the win, 16-14. to 14. I'm loving these close yeah. games. Park River always seems to come out on top, even if it's just by one or two points. I think they've won a couple games by one score. So they're doing what they need to do. Like you said, wins matter. Exactly. All that matters is the dub. You're right. All right, next highlight, let's get it. The Flivers of Kingsford traveling to Gladstone to take on the Braves, and we're going to pick this one up with Kingsford. Knocking on the door. Of the end zone, and it's Logan Norman who's able to barrel in for the score like his name was Donkey Kong, throwing barrels at the plumbers. Next drive for the Braves, Drake Forrest gets the ball out of the shotgun and can't find his man, so what's he going to do? Oh, he's going to cook breakfast. He's going to scramble. Decides to try loft it to Cole Hansen, but it's Kingsford's Josh Via that comes down with the ball. And he's going to run it back a bit and set up the flivers yet again. Looking really good, those flivers are. The blue and white going at it. Kingsford senior quarterback Tyler Kopp gets the snap, drops back, and able to get it in the air with pressure to Chris Carollo, who goes up and comes down with it in the end zone for a half dozen Gladstone. They want to battle back now more than ever. Four starts to scramble to his right, and he sees Zach Hansen open, and he makes a nice sliding catch. You rarely see those nowadays. Same mm -hmm. drive, Forrest. He's going to get the snap, looking for a receiver yet again, but he has to scramble. That's what he does, man. He eludes pressure this time. It makes some time for Caden Allwarden to get open, and Forrest hits him for the touchdown, but it wouldn't be enough for Gladstone. They couldn't come back. They fall on this one to the Flivers, 20-7. to seven. All right, let's take you to Munising's homecoming game tonight against the Lost Purple Hornets. So you know they had to bring the band out. Love a good band. Early second half, Lost with the ball after a fumble from Munising, but Mustangs get a nice stop even though the score is 327 loss. <laughs> Next play, running back Jonah Down, who had a big game last week, continues his big games going on, outrunning Mustangs defenders for another Lance touchdown. It was truly their night. I'm telling you, two-point conversion play. Down is going to power it up the middle, making it a score of 335 Purple Hornets. But Mustangs still have some fight in them. QB Josh Hootery is going to run to his right side, get the first down, but it's not going to matter. Munising loses their homecoming game. Two lots, 42-17. to 17. And we got one more set of scoreboards for the 11-man teams. Looking over at the teams from the east side of the UP. St. Ignis going down to take on the Cardinals of Johannesburg. Lewiston, one of the longest names I have ever seen a high school have <laughs> ever. And uh, Joe Lou. <laughs> they got the best of the Saints in this one, winning 40 to nothing. Oh, you hate to see it. Mm -hmm. And Petoskey, they made the trip north across the bridge to take on Sioux St. Marie. Spelt like salt, and I think they were a little salty in this one, or at least Petoskey was, because uh, it was an overtime game, and you hate to see it. I mean, 7 to 8. Oh, that's a close one. Here we go. All right, let's talk a little late, man, shall we? Cedarville Trojans travel to take on the Rapid River Rockets for this Friday night contact. Cedarville with the ball. It's going to hand it to Grant Fountain, who obliterated Gavin Burke on the nice run up the middle. Good Lord, my man. I hope mm. you're okay. A few mm. drives later, they're going to pitch it to Fountain with a sweet cutback across the whole Ooh. field. No one's going to catch him for a touchdown. You had to do it, didn't I you? I had man? to do it. But Rapid River got answered for that. QB Bryce Ludquist 
hits this deep pass to Lyman Parker Dowsey, who's going to run it in for the touchdown. And they said big man don't know how to run. I mean, they can't, but that one does. That one does. Next seed of real possession, Grant Fallon. He's just a monster tonight. Goodness gracious, up the left sideline for another Trojan touchdown. Now, he may have good runs, but so did the Rockets as running back Griffin Flaff. Hits one like Amon Green for you Packer fans who know. Hits a nice cutback and he's gonna outrun everybody even with the neck pack for a touchdown. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the final score, but at the end of the second quarter, 22-12 for Rapid River. You said Amon Green, was he really the juking type? I mean, he I mean, had to. All, all time leading Packers rusher, right? So exactly. he had to have a couple good jukes in his career. Just a couple. Yeah, just no. a couple. Looking at some more eight man scores from around the Upper Peninsula. Newberry traveling to Crystal Falls to take on the Trojans. Both teams were on winning streaks, and mm, it's going to be Forest Park who, who's able to get the win 58 to 14. This one, not too close. So that win streak gets halted drastically. The Rudyard Bulldogs travel to Brimley. Brimley. Ends up getting the win 38-14. They're now 4-0 on the season.